Hello Airsoft friends, and welcome to this video where we're going to be actively making something today. Isn't that exciting? For those of you that don't know, I run a cool little thing called projectairsoft.co.uk and I design and make cool and helpful and useful accessories and upgrades for Airsoft with the whole idea of trying to make your life easier and better so you can focus more on shooting people than worrying about your own kit. And I think that we can all agree that Glocks are really fun guns. They're, they're some of the most popular popular riffs out there, pretty much everyone in the Nan has got a Glock, but one thing which we need to start catering a bit more for is proper magazine storage, because mags, you, you have them coming out of your ears, and when you're not at the game zone, they either flop about in your bag, and they can get damaged and leaky, and nobody likes a leaky mag, or they're just gonna, I don't know, stay in your gun or something like that. So, we're gonna change that today. Also, I've had a, uh, like a custom order request come in, and I think it's a cool one to, uh, to make a video on. So, so let's do that together. So the main idea is to make a wall mounted mag holder where you can just slide your magazines in just like that. So yeah, that's the main premise for this video. I'm going to show you what I do to design and make it uh, and then we're going to make it and then you can, you can see the final product. This one's for you, Mr. Dave. This one is for you. So first of all, we've got our magazine, which is great, but we need to measure it. We need to know how big this thing is. These are like digital, these are super cheap uh, and they've got like a slidey thing there and if I slide it you'll see it tells me the measurement so I'm going to use this to measure the Glock mag uh, so I know how big how big I need to make stuff 22.6 32.4 now there is also another measurement that I need to take for this magazine and that is the angle of this because what I want to do is have the, the kind of like the holder in place but also have the plastic angled up so it fits in perfectly with the base plate and you'll see this one if I turn it I get an angle just like that boom so that's the degrees and that is 288 degrees okay now that's done we can start to model and make things so we're gonna come across to Tinkercad hooray just because Tinkercad it's nice and simple it's easy I'm not really a big fan of fusion to be honest and I find that this is great for super quick rapid prototyping and this stuff you can whip up in seconds there we go, that will do. Then we need to drop a ruler in there, and I always like to center that down onto the bomb bit, perfect. Now we need to come back to our measurements. Now I do want to allow a load of tolerance in there as well, because if I did it just at those, when the plastic cools, it will shrink and you won't be able to fit the magazine in. And the cool thing about these is that it's not really a super precision part, so we don't have to be hyper accurate with the measurements on this. So because our measurements were 22.6 and 32.4, I'm gonna make it 33.5, and I'm gonna make the other one 22.6, 23.5, 23.5. And this will be a good starting point because we'll print out one of the mag holders, and if it's great, great, and if it's not great, then we can make little tweaks. Now I'm gonna come in here and cut off the top and bottom bits because I only wanna have this general shape, and I wanna flatten off this back corner so I'm going to take this, zero that out, and then make that 23.55. But I want to add in that angly thing I spoke about before, which is why we took the degrees. So we're going to take one of these shapes, we're going to make it nice and big, just like that. And now the degrees was 288, 288 from 360, 60, 72. So if I rotate this 72 degrees, I've brought it so it's three mil off the floor. So we've got three mil of plastic there. And then this shape here on the bottom, which is gonna make up the internals side of the, um, of, of the little of the project. And now if I group all this together, you'll see that this is essentially the internal hole shape that we want to make to make our little Glock magazine stand. We need to decide how much material we wanna have either side to support the Glock. For stuff like this, Three mil will be like okay, but I'm gonna go five just because I, I'd like there being that little bit of little bit of extra support on the back side here though, because that's where it's gonna be screwed into the wall. I'm gonna make that a little bit thicker. I'm gonna make that six because we need to allow for a bevel. So when the screw goes in, it's like countersunk into the piece, which just makes it nice and neat and flush. So because we're gonna have five mil of material here, five mil material here, six mil material there, and also five mil at the front, we'll click this little light bulb, boom, and that gives us this shape back. And we can see it's slightly misshapen for the extra dimensions that we've got on there now. So I'm gonna grab that, enlarge it, uh, it's still three mil from the bottom, we need to enlarge it more. God, look at that, look how big it is. And we need to select these two shapes and make them taller to fit into that. And that's pretty much it 
there. But there is one more thing we need to take into account because it's a Glock mag. If you look here on the back of the, oh, there you go. On the back of the magazine, you can see this little nubbin. And on other brands of Glock mags, there's actually nubbins on either side of those. So we need to take that into account when making this, because otherwise at the minute, if you put this in, it's gonna hit that little nubbin and it's not gonna go down any lower. And just like that, that is perfectly in place. Now we're pretty much ready to export our model and, uh, and, and get it ready to go onto the printer. So I'm taking that green one, I'm turning it off, I'm selecting both of those parts there. I'm gonna merge them together now as well because that's the shape that I kind of, I want them to be. I am then going to make them a hole and then turn the green bit back on. And then if I select these, I can then do boop. And that's gonna give me my Glock holder hole shape. Although there's a strange little bit down there at the bottom. We'll fix that now actually quickly. There we go, boom. Now it will be perfect. And that's our little wall holder. We do want to add the countersink as well for the screw, uh, and that's quite easy to do. Let's say 10 mil. Let's give it a 10 mil countersink. And we've got our screw hole there ready to go, and we've got a little bit poking through. We take this cylinder, we add sides to it to make it a nice smooth cylinder hole. We angle it properly because that's right. And generally speaking, for most screws, like five, six mil is gonna be a decent size hole for this kind of stuff. So let's go six mil. I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller actually. Let's go five. And there we go. That looks good. Yeah, lovely. So I select that, I click export, export to STL, and it'll come up down here. Now to print it, we need to slice it. And what a slicer does is essentially takes that 3D model that we've just created, and it generates the code that the printer will use to, to print that model. And I use Ultimaker Cura, as you can see here. Now I'm gonna grab our file from down here, put it into Cura, and we can see it is in there. And again, we can have one last little fly around. We're only purely doing a sizing test with this, because if there is anything we need to change, then we can alter it in the model, and then, you know, we haven't, designed and printed the whole thing. We've just done a little test. Now we want to select our print settings and I've got a ton of presets here that you can see. Because I want this done quickly, I'm going to pick one of my speedy ones though. And that one will be 0.28, 20% no sup. Boom. So we'll slice that and it's done. And look, that's going to take 34 minutes to print. Time for me now to set up a printer. It is finished, look at that, boom, it's done. And it looks pretty pretty neat and tidy to be fair. So let's quickly crack that off and uh, and hope that the, the, the it fits it. So in an ideal world, the mag will just slide straight into this without any issues. So fingers crossed, our measurements were correct, our tolerances were enough, and God smiles upon us. Look at that! That is not too shabby, if I say so myself. That is all right. Ugh. It is a little bit tight in there, uh, a little bit tighter than I would like it to be, to be honest. However, I think that's more the remnants of using a, um, a thicker layer, because if you print out a thicker layer, you get more material coming out, and then often your tolerances are a little bit off to what they would usually be. So that is a tiny bit tighter than I would, uh, I would usually like. But to be honest with you, that, with a little bit of wear, is already, is already loosening up, so that, I'm pretty happy with. There are a couple of changes I am gonna do to this though. So one of them, flattening off this top section so it doesn't finish off in a peak. Just from a design point of view, it's not necessary and I think it'll look nicer with a flat top. I am gonna widen it a little bit just to make sure that it is a smooth insert and, and exit for the magazine. I did also think about removing some of this front material here just because it's not completely necessary, but at the same time, I think it's quite nice how the whole thing is protected and held in place just like so. So I am gonna leave that, but I am gonna alter the front bit a tiny bit just to account for the magazine follower because it does knob out, just a knob out. It does knob out a little bit from the mag. So all I'm gonna do is give a tiny little round indentation into that front bit. And uh, yeah, I think at that point we're gonna be done. I'm gonna make those changes, but then I'm also gonna go balls to the wall confident that everything's gonna be fine. And I'm gonna print out the four mag holder version of this, which looks a little bit something like this. Look at that, there we go. Look, boom, isn't that nice? And I've got a red one as well, cause I wanted to do one in red and one in tan. And there's actually one printing out in black now too, which is the one I'm gonna be sending out to, uh, to Mr. Dave. So Mr. Dave, I hope you enjoy it because it was made with love and uh, a plastic, yeah. And to show you just exactly how it's gonna work, you essentially, boom, mount that on the wall there, you put your screws 
in those holes there. And I've left screw holes in every single one because if you get in a four pack, there's gonna be mags in each one. And if you've got a mag in there, you're not gonna be able to see it anyway. And depending on how you wanna mount it, you could put a screw in each one or you could put just screws in the ends just like that there. It's completely up to you. But imagine that's mounted on the wall and then all you need to do is you take your mag when you're done with it and boom, just like that. It holds it in nice and secure and that mag isn't going anywhere. And if you ask me, it's quite neat and tidy. It's quite good that. Yeah, I like it. Whether it's extended or not extended or Raven or TM or whatever, if you want to put a Glock mag in there, it will fit. No problem, no questions asked. And it was a pretty quick turnaround too, which I'm happy about. We only needed to do one quick iteration with other items like this SRS to M4 magazine adapter, which needs to be, you know, pretty damn precise for it to work because the M4 mag has got to fit snugly. You need the feed tube in there, right? You need the tube that goes through for the BBs to go. You got the anti-reverse BB catch in there. Then you got the BBs going through into the SRS. Like all of that needs to work perfectly. And if one part fails, nothing is gonna work. So yeah, nice little project, nice way to spend a couple of hours. And uh, yeah, Dave, I hope you're happy with it. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something today and, and, and kind of, yeah, had a little look into the process that we go through when making new items. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to call your hits and I'll see you in the next one.